welcome to our final edition of 2023 of our Stay Smart newsletter and podcast brought to you by Vicinity Corporate Housing. We started doing this uh, podcast and newsletter about seven months ago. Um, we wanted to put information out there that we thought might be relevant to the industry, uh, people that we are you know, in contact with. Um, we had also rebranded this year as Vicinity Corporate Housing, so we wanted to make sure that we were getting our name out there and our message. Um, but also, uh, our, our company, uh, Transitions Group, uh, was founded by Bill Jackson. Uh, he retired recently, and, and one of the things that was important to him was being a leader, leader in our industry. Um, and I think that's what we're trying to do with this podcast and newsletter is provide relevant information to anybody that's transitioning or moving or relocating. Um, anything that we think might be relevant to you or to your clients, that we say that all the time, and it's, it's because we want to be a helpful resource to you, to your clients. I hope this has been helpful. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and dive into what we have, what we saw as the top 10 highlights or headlines or news articles that we saw that affected the industries that we talk about on this uh, podcast in 2023 and maybe how that'll affect 2024. So the first uh, one is sustainability. There was a lot of articles, a lot of news about sustainability, how you know, business travel and relocation, how we're trying to be more sustainable. Um, Silverdor, you know, they announced their um, carbon uh, emitting tool that they're, they're going to be letting their partners use. Um, there's a lot of um, synergies around, you know, corporate housing and relocation and travel and how are we going to do all this more sustainable? Um, ourselves, at Vicinity Corporate Housing, we've been partnering with Green Feet to measure our carbon footprints. Uh, we've kind of put that a baseline in for 2023. Going into 2024, we're going to be trying to track our scope three emissions um, and widen that a little bit more. So sustainability, I think it's something that we'll see a lot talked about in 2024. The next headline that we saw was consolidation. You know, whether it was corporate housing, listing agencies, uh, or most recently the airline industry, um, there's just been a lot of consolidation in corporate housing, we just talked about Synergy um, acquiring PrimeStone um, housing solutions. So that's consolidation of corporate housing. We saw a lot of that recently. Um, we talked about just recently um, some acquisitions in the airline industry. I think we'll continue to see this as we go into 2024. We'll talk a lot more about consolidation. The, the next uh, headline that we saw was leisure travel. So, the, you know, the combination of business and leisure travel, people extending their business trip three or four days for their leisure or vice versa, or staying for three or four days for a leisure travel before a business event. Um, or, you know, I've also heard this term used, it was blended travel. Um, you know, leisure travel was used so much, the term was almost overused this year, a little bit like after 2020 when we heard so, so many people talking about pivot that was just used, overused. So I think leisure travel's maybe been overused a little bit, Maybe that's why we're hearing blended travel. I think this is going to continue to happen in 2024. We're going to just see people more aware of why they're traveling and taking the advantage of those trips and adding leisure travel on this. Kind of ties into our next uh, storyline that, that we saw was you know, wellness and business travel. People realizing their wellness or their employees' rel wellness is important and, and during business travel. I, I, there was a great session at the GBTA conference this year in Dallas that really highlighted this, where how, how companies are trying to track um, the effect, of, you know, the wellness effect of, of business travelers. There was a TMC that was talking about some of the metrics that are really important, whether it's, you know, time changes, you know, um, connections, layovers, you know, whether they're staying three nights, four nights, all of these kind of factor into the travel experience uh, of their business travelers. And I think it's really important. I hope we see more talk about this of how, you know, companies um, and TMCs are looking at the overall wellness of business travelers. And then our next uh, uh, article that was uh, really relevant uh, happened just down the road at a courthouse here in Kansas City. There was a, um, a real estate commission lawsuit that was brought and they ruled in the favor of um, or against the real estate agents against 
National Association of Realtors um, of how real estate commissions are paid. You know, this is going to get challenged. It's already been challenged. It's going to be challenged. It's probably going to take several years before we see the true impact of this, but it's going to be a big impact on real estate um, and how you know, kind of similar um, industries around real estate um, are affected. Um, so it'll be a couple years before we how we see that true impact, but it's, it's definitely going to be something that we talk about a lot in 2024 and the years coming. And then the, the next headline that we saw was was legislation, um, mostly around short term rentals. So whether it was you know, Dallas, Phoenix, or most in the headlines was New York City's ban on short term rentals less than 30 nights, um, how that's impacting the short term rental space, the availability, um, hotel prices going up because there's less availability in short term rentals. But what I thought was most interesting was some of the Canadian provinces, uh, in particular British Columbia, had put in new legislation around short-term rentals, but they listed it at 90 days or less, which really falls into kind of the corporate housing space, um, my industry. So I hope that stays up north and doesn't come down to the U.S., but that that was a big impact on the Canadian corporate housing industry if that, if that goes through. So it's definitely something that we'll keep an eye on going into 2024. And the next uh, headline that we saw was high-speed rail. This was, we saw Brightline um, they are actually operating now in Florida, um, South Florida to Orlando. They're doing business. Um, and then the Biden administration was just out in Las Vegas. Uh, there's a, a high speed from Las Vegas to, to LA um, that is, is they're hoping to have ready for the 2028 Olympics. Uh, and then the Biden administration announcing 10 projects, high speed rail lines that are, it's a huge impact the biggest impact on high speed rail that we've seen since the 70s. So I think, you know, from travel, from travel perspective in the U.S., when we're looking at sustainability options that we talked about earlier, high speed rail is something that we're going to need to use in the U.S. if we're going to be able to find some more sustainable solutions. And then the next article, this is kind of business related in general, the economy, but the Fed pausing interest rates and how that affects mortgage rates and some of the, the industries around that. So obviously interest rates were up several times, several rate increases. The mortgage rate got up close to 8% um, and, and we saw that effect on the, the, the real estate industry because they're just people were not selling their homes because they didn't want to move out and move into a new home when they're sitting on a three or 4% mortgage right now and then they're going to be paying a seven or 8% mortgage on a new home. So we've just seen a record low number of existing home sales this year and that's kind of elevated the the home prices because there's low inventory so new home buyers are not able to get into uh new homes because they're so expensive um and this has affected the relocation industry because people aren't relocating or hesitant to relocate so rmcs are we've seen a flat or down year this year um and we'll see this go into next year until um, we see those interest rates come down a little bit. This has affected the corporate housing industry because a lot of those relocations, the RMC industry, u- utilizes corporate housing. And so for us in particular, RMC has really affected us. We've been down flat this year uh, from that segment. So we've seen a lot of you know news that the Fed, the Fed did pause their interest rates. They're looking to three rate reductions next year, possibly. Um, Redfin recently had you know, forecast mortgage rates coming down to the mid sixes. So I think that will hopefully, you know, thaw out the, the real estate industry next year. And then next, kind of going into that, where you know, the location industry had thought business travel, travel in general is definitely back. We saw um, GBTA had put out some, some forecast um, and this year in the US, at least 2023, is going to surpass pre-COVID numbers for business travel in the US. Uh, GBTA is forecasting Globally, in 2024, uh, the numbers would be above 2019 numbers and then go up every year. They're looking in 2028, 25% increase since 2019 numbers. So travel is back. Travel is back in a big way. Um, And then finally, uh, kind of on a personal level, uh, we had put out a a newsletter article about our founder, Bill Jackson, and uh, Barney Lynn here, our most recent president, both retiring. Um, they had a huge impact on my career. I've been with the company for 25 years. Both of them had a big impact on, on my career and, and many people 
in our company and in the corporate housing, furniture rental business. There's been so much that they've given to the industry. Um, I can't say enough for them. So enjoy retirement, Bill and Barney. Looking forward to, um, to your travels that you're going to be doing and, and everything that you're going to be doing in retirement. And then finally, really kind of a bonus article that we put in here was just locally here in Kansas City, uh, the new airport opened in February, February 28th. The new uh, Kansas City International Airport opened. It's one of the best airports that I've seen. Um, I've traveled through uh, the Kansas City Airport, the new airport, you know, dozen, 15 times already this year. Um, I've you know, been through numerous airports throughout uh, the country, and this really is a crown jewel for Kansas City. So those are the articles that we saw this year that we thought were impactful to to you or to your clients. Um, if there's something that you'd like to see us talk about next year, please let us know. Um, I hope you all have a happy holidays and a wonderful new year. Can't wait to talk to everyone in 2024. That's what I see transitioning this year. Take care everyone.